Hi guys, welcome to the video and welcome to my hotel room up in Carlisle. I'm currently away with work so it makes it quite hard to film a car video when you're not with your car and I've actually not really been with my car pretty much all of this month so it's been pretty hard to film a car video when I haven't actually been around. Anyway, so I thought instead of doing something on the car, I thought I would do how I edit my photos and I just so happen to have photos of my car. So that's how it relates. This is gonna be like a, well not really a how-to because I'm not a professional photographer, I just like editing photos. So this is gonna be photos that I've taken and I'm gonna edit them in Adobe Lightroom and hopefully you guys can learn something. I don't know, I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it, this is just how I do it. So hopefully you guys like the edit I come out with and that you can apply any of this to yours if you're looking to edit photos as well. So let's jump onto the laptop and get on with it. So then guys, here we are inside Lightroom. This is the photo I took. I shot this raw. So if you don't know what that is, basically it's better than JPEG because it records a lot more information in the image, which means it gives you more flexibility when you're editing in terms of like the colors and also the exposure and things like that. I deliberately usually underexpose shots and that's because the highlights, which you can see here are pretty blown out. There's more information in the shadows and things. So you can usually pull back things like underneath the car here and things like that, whereas the sky being that bright it's usually pretty hard to pull back it was a very blue sky this day anyway so there's not going to be any clouds or anything there as far as i can remember anyway this is the starting image basically usually what i go to do is i start adjusting basically up here i usually pretty much always drag my highlights all the way down it doesn't really affect the image you don't start to see grain or anything but it does look way better even just by doing that so do that and then i'll usually bring the shadows up as well Hence why I underexpose it. You'll see that it's making a pretty big difference. Just by doing those two things, it brings out that tree in the background and also brings out the bridge a bit more and then the side of the bridge doesn't look awful. Just for two adjustments, that already looks way better. I then usually mess around with the whites. So the whites will probably bring down a little bit because you can see, I don't want to go too far though. If you see if I go further, it turns the whites almost gray. So I'm gonna bring those. It's never, it's not much, it's quite subtle here. And then probably just bring the blacks up a little bit maybe yeah really not much at all i'll probably put in a bit of contrast here just to make it more contrasty obviously and then this is a big one so this is the tone curve here i basically will put three points on this sort of equal length apart like that and create like an s curve so if you see it if i go extreme obviously that looks horrendous but you see the things that it's adjusting so i usually go this again is really minor so you don't want to be doing anything crazy crazy here well unless that's the look you're going for you see what this one does here just whoa so yeah just a little bit bring this one down so that's the s curve something like that what usually seems to happen whenever i shoot photos of this car is it really brings out the blues and that's because obviously the sky is blue and things and the gray has like a blue tint to it so what i tend to do actually is i desaturate the blues so you'll see what happens basically it makes the car gray but obviously if you're shooting with a blue sky or anything like that that's obviously going to affect the sky as well unless you were to do it as a mask i don't usually go all the way down to minus 100 that's just what it looks like and then if i was to go the other way obviously you can see why are all the bits that are blue so i yeah i knock it down usually around minus yeah 40 ish maybe minus 50 and then it just makes the car gray again and then the big one that you see in a lot of photos of cars is clarity and if i again put this to 100 you'll see what it does. it does make it look very cool i did used to do a lot of clarity in a lot of photos just because it was so new and just looked so awesome but now i tone it back so yeah i usually go for something like yeah around 46 i mean it's like 50 again it's nothing nothing crazy that's probably a pretty good base really there's not too much more i would do with just these settings i mean there's plenty of things you can adjust i mean you can add some colors in or whatever and there's loads of other things you can do i may go back in once i've done some more tweaks and things and change various other little bits but it's going to be nothing crazy so from here what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to use a mask which is this brush tool here so what this does is let me zoom in i basically want to bring out my lower control arms if i'm to zoom in a long way and then we want to be down here so what this will do, I've got it set as an exposure minus 55 just because that's what I've set the preset to. So what I also do is click this down here, show selected mask overlay. And what that will do is anything you paint with this brush, you'll see 
come out in red. And basically only the bits in red are the things that are gonna be affected by the mask. So basically I'm just gonna color in, this isn't the color it actually makes it, this is just purely showing you where the mask is gonna be. So I'm gonna do this under here for there, for that lower control arm. Move this over and do this one as well. This is pretty rough, but you, you get the idea. Let's move that back more to the middle. So you can see that that's, I mean, it's not the whole lower control arm, but you get the idea. So if I untick that box, that's what it actually looks like right now. Let me put the exposure back to zero. What I'm probably gonna do is bump up the exposure actually. And you'll see just those bits come to life and obviously they don't look that red right now. But if I bump up the saturation, I can bring them back to a red color which when you're zoomed in this far doesn't look the best, but when you go all the way out, does look pretty cool. So let's just have a quick look. You can see that just really pops with the red and then the red of the tail lights and just really accentuates that. I mean, the mask is pretty bad. So I'll probably go back in and edit that a little bit better. It seems to be along this edge that there's a problem. So if I click F on the keyboard, that brings up a full screen and yeah, it looks a little bit better. If we go to before and after now, you can see like, when you really think about it, it's not crazy amounts of different from this. What I then will go and do, I'm actually gonna say that it's maybe the shadows are a bit too high. I'll bring that down a little bit. From here, I will then use this, which is graduated filters. You can see here again, I've got it set to minus 0.55. It just looks the best for a quick one. And basically what these do is, depending on the size you make the filter, it darkens this bit. So all of this bit here, that's all minus 0.55. And then it gradually fades into no exposure down. And obviously you can change all these things and that'll make a difference as well. So, but for this and for most cars, I'll usually do a triangle around the car. What it should do is make the car pop a little bit. I might actually drag it out onto the car a little bit just to, especially this one actually, I'll move this over just to bring down that side a bit because it's a bit much. And then one, just bring it there and just move it down. Sorry if you can hear the fan of my laptop. Maybe it's a bit like that. Yeah, so that's pretty much the finished product really. So you can see by making the triangle of exposure graduated filters, it basically pulls the car out of the image, which is something I do just to make the car pop because obviously that's the thing that's the most important thing. So, so that is pretty much done as far as I'm concerned. A bit more clarity maybe. Yeah, it's nothing crazy. Yeah, a little bit more clarity, so 60 clarity now. And now I've done that. The last bit I'm gonna do is just change the angle slightly because it kind of looks like the car's leaning down to the right. So I'm just gonna use the angle here. There's a couple of cool things you can do with this actually. You can either click on it and draw a line on the thing that you think is flat and it will twist it for you. That's one way of doing it, if I undo that. Or you can just drag the angle bar as well. So. It depends on what it is. If you don't have many straight lines that you know is like the horizon line, for example, then you can just do this. And for the sake of it, I'm just gonna use this as well. So that looks pretty straight to me. And that actually really changes the image. So that does it really. Now that that angle has changed, that's, I'm pretty happy with this image. So that's the finished product. Obviously there's plenty of other things I could do to this if I really wanted to. But for me, that's, that's sort of just how I like to edit the photos really. So. Yeah, there we go, that's that photo done. No crazy colour adjustments or anything really, it's quite a simple looking at it, but I just think it looks really effective. I really like taking the blue out of the grey because it just makes the grey look a lot better. And then obviously having red lower control arms and making those pop out just looks way cooler. So guys, there you go. Hopefully you can see the difference between the before and the after. Bearing in mind, I have never had any lessons on Lightroom. Uh, purely self-taught, just been watching other YouTube videos, stuff like that. Hopefully you've been able to learn something from this. Let me know down below if you like this style of content because I've never actually done anything like this before and if people are interested in learning some other things, if you've got any suggestions, then drop those in the comment section below. Subscribe, like the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.